This is the last class about faith. And um, it's been great uh, to learn about how God and His mercy, that is what we're going to learn a little bit more, more today. The mercy and the, the grace of God with faith. So join me to the Roman. We're going to start in this chapter, Rome, Rome, Romans 12, 1 to 8. If uh, somebody want to help me to read it, I appreciate it. Okay. Okay. I, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by grace, for the by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function, so we, though many, are one body in Christ, and individually members one of another. Having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us, the, let us use them. If prophet, prophecy in proportion to our faith, if service in our serving, the one who teaches in his teaching, the one who exhorts in his exhortation, the one who contributes in generosity, the one who leads with zeal, the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. Amen. Thank you. So the, the apostle starts, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, so we have to ask why he says that. So we can go to the chapter 11 and to understand a little bit more why he says that. In the 11, 7 and 8, it says, if you want to read it. What then? Israel failed to obtain what it was seeking. The elect obtained it, but the rest were hardened. As it is written, God gave them a spirit of stupor eyes that would not see, ears that would not hear, and down to this very day. This amazed Paul so much that at the end of the chapter, I mean, he says, it's like he's been understanding that for the grace of God, he stopped the process, we can say it in some way, the process of salvation with, his, with Israel, with the Jewish. And he says, listen, Romans, what, li, li, see with me what is going on. That God has a process for many years with Israel, but now he stopped. Why? In that way, he can include you in this salvation. So you, you can see why he's so like amazed this is he, Paul is like at the end of the chapter says in the uh, verse 33 says oh the deep of the righteous and wisdom of knowledge of God who unsearchable are his judgments and how inscriptable his way he says I can understand I can understand. I only see what's going on here. I don't deserve this salvation. I'm a Jewish. I don't deserve the salvation. Same to you. You don't deserve it. Same to us. You don't deserve it. Deserve it. So he says, that's what he says, by the mercies of God to present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Do you understand what God did for you? It is amazing. Something that you don't you can, you can deserve. Now God give it to you. And that's what he said to Romans. And that's amazing to understand a little bit more what we're going to see. So, Paul has been showing the greatness of grace toward the Jewish, but above all towards the Gentiles. In this case, he is speaking to the Roman church 
who after understanding that everything is by him and for him, asks them to live a life according to the unmerited favor, favor that they have received. He says for them. And he says in the, in the verse number three, he says, for by the grace give it to me, I say. What he says is, I'm not the big apostle, you know? I'm not the huge person. What he says is, I have gifts. I mean, you know how apostle. He made miracles. He came people to life. What was that? What was that? But he says, by the grace given to me. So what he says, if we can translate it, is for the mercy, for the grace of God. So all the glory is for God. So he says, if you have a gift, like he has a gift, if you have something that God gives to you, think with me. For by the grace given to me, I say, he says, do not brag, do not brag about the gift you receive it, because since faith, faith is a gift that is received, is not earned or born with it. Right? You're born with the gift of faith. We were there. And if you have any gift, it's not because you are a good person. Right? <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> it's good to have. <laughs> Sometimes you have to amen yourself to get it out. <laughs> so, what Paul says he's here is so the request in these pages is to judge ourselves by understanding where God rescued us from in order to know have a higher concept or ourselves than we should have. We can not brag out brag about our salvation because we receive it, right? So Paul calls us to evaluate himself according to the faith. It's some some it's, it's like when when you, you see a key and he, he says to the, to, the, to the father, can I, can I use the car? And the father said, all right, it's a Lamborghini, but it's okay, take it. So he take the car, and what, 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 what he, he do in the first time? He put the windows down, he music full, full up, and go to the neighbor and with the glasses. <laughs> there is the friends, and then, hey. <laughs> So what he says is, I am the boss. This is my car. You know, respect me for what I got. That's, that's happening a lot. What does happen a lot? And with the people who have some minister who has given, this is the same. Look at me. Look how I make miracles. Look how I preach. Look how the people cry. After I pray, I, after I preach. Do you ever see this? For TV or for radio? It's coming the big apostle. What did it say? I am the boss. <laughs> I am the boss. It is funny. It is funny. But what they say is, actually is, um, I win this gift. You see my voice? I have a beautiful voice for radio. So listen. Listen my voice on radio. You see, the people when do this, what they say is, this is mine. You know, I born with this. But what can I do? What they say is, this is not, not about you guys. This is not about you. But Paulo says, for the grace that I receive, he says, this salvation, this gift is no mine. If, 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 Paul, if, if Paul says that, what can we think about us? I mean, 
he received a beautiful revelation. He saw Jesus Christ, and he says that is we can't we can we think about us. So, join me to First Corinthians four, verse seven. For who sees anything different in you? What do you have that you did not receive? If then you received it, why do you boast as if you did not receive it? Right. So if you don't receive it, what do you pray for you? I mean, when you say, hey, look at me. <laughs> yeah? Don't look at me. Paul said, don't look You know what? Don't look at me in this, in this way. Because it's not me. If I receive it, if, if I receive something, it's from God. And in some way, this is a heavy burden for anyone. I mean, if, I, if God give me something, and I want to be proud of me, so this gift is going to be some, something bad for me, something really bad for me. It's going to be, I, I have the chance to, to risk, like, in the peace of God that if I do something, it's not, it's not for, my, for, my, for myself. It's that God do it. I mean, I can't convince you to anything. I mean, I'm talking about the, 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 about the spiritual things. It has to be the Holy Spirit. I can bring that super message. And the people can say, wow, yeah, amazing. Yeah, you're good. But inside what has happened? Probably nothing. Probably nothing. So I've been learning this. I've been learning this with these uh, classes because sometimes it's stand here, it's like, oh, what should I have to do? What should I have to say? How can I convince these brothers to live according to this? How can I do it? And God says, hey, do you remember that is, that, that is my gift? And you can convince them. It's my spirit to convince them. Then it's like, oh yeah, I forget that. <laughs> just, uh, I just forget that. Sorry. <laughs> so it's the best way that we can serve. The best way that we can live our faith is through God. Uh, is the only way. So <clears throat> Gal Galatians one ten. <laughs> Am I now seeking the favor of men or of God? <clears throat> or am I trying to please men? If I were still trying to please men, I should not be a servant of Christ. So I think I think this happened to us, to everyone. Everyone. I mean, it's natural. But why is natural? Well the Bible shows us why it's natural. Do you remember what swamp happened in, with Eva? Eve? 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 Sorry. Eve? Yeah. She said, Satan says, if you do this, you're going to be God. You don't need any more God because you can be God. So you go, oh, really? Okay, take it. Mm. Hey, Adam, come, eat. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> That's happened. And that's what they transmit us. That's the sin that we have to deal every day. We deal with this every day. We want to be God. That's why it's so hard to just give up. To, I'm not, I, I'm not going gonna, gonna to die. I have to die myself. It's not easy, right? You can say, oh yeah, I die. I, I, I die myself every day. I mean, what it says in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the Roman 12, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, oh, I, I do it every day. You can, can you do say that? I can't. It's hard. It's a bottle. So, but we have, we have to understand that everyone has this problem. 
and we receive it for Adam and Eve. But we have to fight. That's what uh, Paul says. According to this, that the grace that you receive, you have to fight. You have to love Jesus Christ and be like Him. He is your target. He is our target. So it's hard to us to depend, right? So, but Paul gave us an excellent way to die for ourselves. And this is, uh, we can see this, is for the gift, the gift. Paul, this is talking, after he says, but the grace given to me, according to this grace, don't think about yourself in wrong way, in wrong way, because you receive this for, 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 for grace, right? So how you receive this for grace, you, can apply through the gifts. Let's join, show me, join me please to uh, Ephesians 4, 4 to 7. It's very similar what we, what we uh, read in the Romans about the gift. It's, but we are gonna see that we are part of the body. So if you have Ephesians 4, 4 to 7, There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all, in all, by grace, but grace was given to each one of us according to the measure Christ so he says but grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift so he's not saying some people receive gift he's saying everyone receive gift everyone if you you are safe you have a gift it doesn't matter in some way that you don't maybe know what God, what gift you have. We're gonna see this, one. but if you've been saved for God, you can count. You have a gift. So Paul said us in illustration of the body, where if you look closely, there is no possibility of having been saved and not give to help us apply our faith. We are part of the body of Christ and each member has a special function. So, if the pastor is here, if the pastor asks you, what are you give? Could you say it with confidence? What would you respond? All right, my gift is this one. Would you, maybe? Because in order to we are being saved, we have a gift. And it's important. Why is it important to give? Because Paul says, okay, if you have faith, you can express it through the gift. But if you don't know what are your gift, how can you express your your faith? Right? It's important to, to understand this point. Because some people is been praying, Lord, I want to know you, I want to serve you. And they are being praying for many, many, many times. Because maybe they don't have, they, they, they have a wrong idea to what is the faith. They, 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 many people think that they need power, power in some way to preach in some 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 power to to put the hands and make miracles. A lot of people living in this way. I used to. Probably more than 60% of the church. But they don't see the gift. They only waiting. So what they do in the church? Nothing. 
Why do you need a priest? Ah, I don't have the power. I don't have the power. I don't have, I mean, I'm mean, not a pastor. So how do you live your life, Christian life? Well, I go to a church. And I listen to the message. And I read the Bible, which is good. But in your view, but when you do it, because you are part of the body, right? So what Paul says is, is if you, if the, if the leg says, I'm not gonna walk today, what's happened with the body? It's not going anywhere. If the eye says, oh, I don't wanna see today, I'm too small, you know, I'm too insignificant. I'm not the big body, I mean the muscle. So let's not see it anymore today. What's, what, what will happen? We, we, we don't, we're gonna cry all the time. So if you have a gift, if you have a gift, because you have it, if you are saved, you got it, you need to put it in service. Because that is how God wants you to proclaim and live your faith. That's how. It doesn't matter if it's big or it's not. <clears throat> so that's that's happening a lot. And, 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 this, and it's a problem. And it's a problem. Paul says it is a problem. When the body, when, when someone in the body says no more. I mean I don't have I, I, I'm not part of the body. What they say actually is it's like I'm not part of the body, you know? You look good. I mean, you look like yeah, God give you something great. But to me, it's a, I'm okay just doing, going, going to the church. What Paul says, and actually God says, I'm sorry, I give you, I give you something. And in 1 Corinthians 12, 22 and 23, let's, we're gonna see this. Got it somewhat more. On the contrary, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And on those parts of the body that we think less honorable, we bestow the greatest honor. And our unpresentable parts are treated with greater modesty. Amazing. The weakest are essential. How about I delete this little one? What am I gonna do with this? Yeah. <laughs> what God said was, it's God who says, I put you there because you are essential. Let me remind you that it's God, it is the gift of God. So God know why he do it. Why he do it. We only have to make it available to him and he will use it. We don't see too much to, to, in, many, in many church, the people who serve, who clean, who put the church, we don't see it. When we came to the church, we see the, the stage, the, the music, and you see? But usually we don't see a lot of things that happen behind all this. And God said, but to the, to the people say, do it. And God says, looks like the, the weakest are essential. And it is. It is essential. But, though, but some do not know if they have a gift, so the best way to find out is, the, is by serving. This is the best way that we can know. How, how we can uh, serve? We can start in our families in our homes. I mean, it's important to be uh, that, that our family, because you can do it, some things in the church in which that's gonna be good, it's necessary. But if the same, if the people of your, of the, the, your family don't see you 
doing or serving at the same way that's gonna just that's like hmm, but but this is not normal. So the best the first place I would say to find maybe your gift is in your own home. For example, if you teach, the best way is teaching your wife or teaching your kids, right? If you have this gift, is this the best way? So, oh, maybe what, what, what is my gift? I like to teach my kids. So probably I can teach to the people, right? It's a good way. And then obviously the church needs you, the body of Christ needs you in this, in this way. So uh, there is a list of uh, the gifts and um, Ephesians and for Corinthians and Corinthians and Roman and I can read some of them. Maybe you can say, oh, maybe that's mine. Uh, these are prophecy, but we have to understand the prophecy is not to is is not to rebel in the, 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 the future, right? It's about teach. So prophecy. Serving, teaching, we got this gift here. Encourage, giving, leadership, mercy, the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, faith, healing, uh, speaking in, well, speaking in tongues, that's not, <laughs> I have to be clear because I came to the a context, a, a different context. Uh, charismatic context. So when you say this, they, they ah, you say I, I speak that language. No, blah, 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 blah. it's not that language. It doesn't. That's not a language. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so. I do that again. I got it. I remember they they they, 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 they were doing uh, campaigns. I mean, and the people tell the people, other people, that if you are a believer. You must to talk. You must to talk in this way. Because if you don't do it, you are not safe. <laughs> what? <laughs> so they teach you. <laughs> they say, repeat, amala amala. It's funny, but I see it. Repeat after me. This is supposed to be the gift is a gift of God. If the Holy Spirit gives you with whole power and you put it in the floor and you start to I got the gift, I can't speak it in, in tongues. Yeah, no. That's not the tongue that the, the, the Bible says. I have to say it. I'm sorry, I have to say it. So uh, governments, diverse tongues, and well, there is a lot of gifts. There's not all this is not all of the gifts. But this is a lot of, 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 of sin. So, so no matter what gift we have, no matter, we saw it, no matter if it's tiny or it's big, we must exercise our faith through the gift that God has given to us. Brother, you have faith, you have, if you believe in God, you have a gift. Put it, present it to God. If you don't know what God, what, what gift you have, start to, they start to pray and start to serve. See what, what in, in the church, what, what can you do? There's a lot of things that you can do, right? So let's, let's, let's uh, go to the second point, is the obedience of the commandments. And uh, this is a great way to live like Jesus lived. I mean, you want to see someone who lived the faith? Who is it? Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Show us how he lived this. How? So, Jesus lived the commandments. It was always according to the commandments. And when we, we meditate on them and decide to live by them, we are living by faith. Because by living by them, we are declaring that God is real. Because do not, because we do, we don't fulfill them for us. We fulfill them for Him. So we have we have to understand that something clear. 
we don't we don't do it for salvation, right? We all know this. We don't we don't do it for salvation. But Jesus don't need salvation. And he'll leave it completely. And we have to do it. So let's go John 14 20 15 verse 15 and then the 21. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Boom. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you can fin we can finish here. I mean, what what would you, what was going to happen if Jesus come to you and you say he said he asked you, um, do you love me? Excuse me, do you love me? Hey, well, I'll try. How? What is my command? Would say he doesn't say that. He he has a lot of grace. But he, what what's happening? He said he asked you, what is my commandment? Uh, do you know the commandments? It's important to know the commandments and meditate about them because Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. It's simple, right? It's a way. Leave it is another or another thing. So, but but Jesus said it. In the first twenty one, please. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father. And I will love him and manifest myself to him. So to love God with all our being implies to know him. Right? You can know you can love something that you don't love, you don't know. So I could say that love, loving God is not having idols. It's not blaspheming his name. He, or not keeping his Sabbath. But the truth is that if we love him, everything mentioned will be the fruit of doing it. It's like saying that I love my wife, who is here, <laughs> and say, and I, I, but I never spoil her with things that she likes. I just don't make adultery, or I just never lie to her, or I just try to be, I mean, cut the grass. <laughs> and you don't feel, you don't feel loved. I mean, it's not at all. It's not. It's, it's not all. We have to, we have to do more than that. I have to take care of her. I have to. I mean, love, love means decision, and that's why it's hard. It's hard because have the decision means renunciar, do give up. See, I get the word, thank you. <laughs> it's to give up. And who likes to give up? No one. Oh, I'm on the couch, watching my TV. <laughs> Honey, can you help me? <laughs> okay. So, you have to give up. But this is more than that. I, don't, I, I, I can't wait that give, she, she called me to do something. I have to do something else. Right? And we have, God, God is told us, to us, you, you want to love me? Well, I present to you some way, this way, the commandment. Because if you have the first commandment in your mind, it's going to be great for you. I mean, the commandments is the best way to live for us. Because if we are believers, you don't want to live according to the world, right? I mean, I tried. I remember that when I was uh, many years, I say, it's, it's, I can't because I have a distortion of the truth. So I thought that if I sin, I'm not a son of God. So at some point I stop and I say, I can't do this anymore. Probably yeah, I'm not saved. Probably because they teach this. If you're sinning, you're sin. Well, we sin every day. I don't know how they do it. But at some point I stop and I say, I can do this, you know what? I can do this. So I start to try to live 
like unbelievable. But the problem was, I don't like that style of life. The music, it was random. Not all the ugly, but some of the, the music was, the conversation with some people, it was like, that's all. I mean, that's all? Money? Pleasure? It's in, in, in some point, I was depressed, depressed because I told you this, I think, that the last class. In some point, I was very depressed because in, for, for one side, I, I got the war and um, the, this kind of life, uh, cosmovision that I don't like it, I don't want to leave it. it, it's not for me. But in this point, it was God. But I like, can feel those commandments and I can do this and I can do that. So I was in the middle and I, I just, I don't want to leave. So it's, that happened to a lot of people. And they refuse, they go to the homes and the rooms and they don't go out for many, many, sometimes years. Because they don't want nothing with the world, but they can go to the God because they, they feel bad. Only the, for the mercy of God, He showed me that He saved me no matter what. And he said he, 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 and his salvation is for all, for all eternity. And that is a grace news. So, 1 John 2, verse to 4. Verse, verse to 4. And by this, and by this we may know, and by this we may be sure that we know him. We keep his commandments. He who says, I know him, but disobeys his commandments is a liar. The truth is not in him. So we don't, we don't be a liar, right? And what it says God here is, it's not condemnation. It's not saying, you are a liar. No. What he says is the opposite. Come on. You are my son. You have a new nature. You can do this. You can do it. But if somebody don't do it, and they say, oh, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, I, I love God, yeah, but you don't see the fruit ever, well, it's a liar. It's a liar. So, in the same way, the other six commandments to summarize it is loving our neighbors are given to us to create a separate lifestyle, living as citizens, citizens of his kingdom. We can see the first John five, two to four. And this we know that we love the children of God, and we love God and obey his commandments. And this is the love of God that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, our faith. Great, this is the victory that we have. Victory that have become the war of our faith. And for through this faith, God says, what he says is, you can live my commandments. Are you gonna sin? Yeah. We are still in this flesh. And that's gonna happen. But like uh, someone who do a sport, you have to prepare every day you have to eat very well. You have to do a lot of things to this. So God wants to say, He said, there's no commandments. That's how you can prepare your life, your faith, your style of life. So faith is a, style, is a, style, is a, a lifestyle. God is calling us, calling us to live it because He has awarded us with faith to do so. So let's finish the third. We're gonna, oh no, we got another point. The third point that I want to, is the preaching the gospel. There is a great way to apply, or to live the life, the, the faith. And this is hard. <laughs> I got to tell you. This is, it, it, it is hard, hard. But we can, we can see it in Matthew 28, 18. Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, teaching them to observe all I commanded you. 
and behold, I am with you, even to the end of the age. All authority. We need faith. What else we need? I mean, we have God, our like a Father, and He's with us. And He says, all authority is in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore. Why don't we go? <laughs> it's a good question, right? And make disciples uh, of all nations. So the best way to live the, uh, the faith is by proclaiming it. I mean, when you have to say, all right, uh, God, Jesus is God. To someone, you are proclaiming your faith. You expose your faith. And God give you the conviction. But if you don't say nothing, how can you increase your faith? That's not going to happen. So the invitation, in some way, invitation of God is go and preach the gospel. That's going to be your faith super strong. In, with the time, every time you, you preach the gospel, you say someone, but uh, in some, it, it doesn't matter how you do it. We're going to see this. But when you proclaim it, your faith is going to be great. So, so to close this set series of faith, I would like for us to learn to share the gospel with others. Can any one of you share with us how you will do it? <laughs> it's difficult. We can do it. We can do it all together. How will you? How will you start? How will you start? How usually you do it to start to proclaim the the gospel? It's not. It's not always. Some people do it in, in the same way always. Which is okay, you feel feel good with that, it's okay. But how you do how will you do it? I think it's easier to find an opening maybe with current events, what's going on, rather than just cold to go up, you know, someone and start giving the gospel. You know, it's people that people who you know you have some credibility with when a subject comes up that relates to the gospel, bringing it up that way. Mm -hmm. And trying to kind of lead the conversation in that way. I get shot down too. But um, it's, a, it's a more natural approach to me. Yeah, and then it, I think it has to be natural. I mean, we can learn on some part. It's important. It's the Bible in the Holy Spirit who's going to speak through us. But the Bible, right? But um, it have to be in some way. We have to meditate about the, what is the gospel, and in that way we can approach someone and to teach the gospel. So, would you like to see Luke 18? I don't know if the pastor you wanna you wanna you wanna share the way. I have the way. I have some way. You wanna and you do you did it great. But do you maybe wanna say so? Uh, you go ahead. I, I mean, I will, but if you'd like, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Luke 18, 18 20, uh, to 21. I feel comfortable with this way. I know, I, I learned it from Living Waters. Do you ever hear this? Living Waters mm -hmm. in, in, in turn, yeah. How they preach, how they preach the gospel. So, could you read, please? Uh, 82 and 21. And a ruler asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not steal, do not bear false witness. Honor your father and mother. And he said, all these things I have kept from my youth. So what uh, Jesus uh, says, why are you calling me uh, good? 
there's only one good. He's got. And then we have to. I have to. Uh, he's not saying I'm not good. I'm not God. He's God. But the point here is, do you believe that there are good people? Do you believe? Are you a good people? A good person? And that is a good question. Because the people usually say, oh well, yeah, I have the people. I don't care anyone. I usually don't lie. Mm, think so? <laughs> it's a lie. That's a lie. <clears throat> so are, are you a good person? The people always, almost always, says, yes, I'm a good person. So when someone says, yes, I'm a good person, what, what they say is, I'm a good, I'm a God. I'm God. Because Jesus says, only God is good. Right? Only God is good. So if you answer is yes, I'm a good person. Oh, so I'm, I'm a good, I'm good. So you're God. So we have to share, in, in Jesus, show you, all right, all right, you're good. Next is, that's for you. So let's check out uh, the commandments. <laughs> this is just check the commandments. Don't kill, don't lie, don't this, don't that. And <clears throat> that what I do it is, do you ever lie? Do you ever lie? I mean, the people say no, it's a lie. <laughs> it's a lie. I mean, we can lie in many different ways. Do you ever steal something? Robar? <coughs> we can do it in many ways. When we go to the work, job, the job, and we say, hey, I'm here, but you are doing all other stuff, you steal the time. So there's many ways. It's not only go to the bank and rob. And maybe no, 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 not too much people do this. But there's so many ways to do it. So how do you call someone to steal? How do you, como, how do you call, como llamar a alguien que roba? Thief. How do you call someone that steals? How do you call? Thief. 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 Right, so, do you ever saw another person, not your wife or husband, with different way? <laughs> So how do you, this is adultery. Do you have adultery? How do you call it uh, this person? Fornicator. <laughs> You're right. <clears throat> so at the end, when we we got it, okay, and we can crawl, we can we can search some uh, commandments, and when we go there, so you say what you say for your one word is that you are a liar, you are a murderer, because not, not because you kill it, because if you hate someone, Jesus says, you hear that, he said, they, they don't kill. But I tell you this, if you hate, you already killed. So you are a murderer, you are a daughter, you are a liar, you blaspheme. How many times do you say God in, in, not, in, in not a good way? That is a blasphemy, right? So for you, own confession you are this so let's say that you die today and you go in front of God for your confession where are you going to be heaven or hell you are in front of the judge which is God which is the only good where will you go hell I will help I mean there's no way. This is, the, this is the law. I will go help. In this order, we can say, all right, that's, that's true. But there's a good news. And this is the gospel. This is the new, good news. You have to go hell for what you did. But Jesus come to this world and he died in your place, like a murderer, like a adulterer, like a liar, like everything. And he paid this doubt. Amen. For you. He said, amen. 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 And, the, and if the Holy Spirit comes to this person, this person will be say, yeah, I need Jesus now. I need Jesus. 
I need the I need the salvation. I can save myself. So I need this gospel. This the best news. Somebody says this is the best news because we have the worst news new in all times. So that's why we this is the best. So we have this we can we can we can we can do this we can apply our faith in many ways but I give you only three through through the gift we all have the gift through the commandments it's a great opportunity to love God He said you love me do the make my commandments and you're gonna grow in your faith and preaching the gospel Amen, Amen. Amen.